Please, take this case as if Mobad were your son. Because if it were so, everything, any, everybody that had one contact or the other with this man would have been brought to book in one way or the other. I also want to mention that I know in functional countries, you know, where they have good laws that bind them. Security is not about emotion. It's serious business. Hi everyone, welcome on board to Hopper.tv. Exactly. That is what we are talking about. Handle this one as if it were your own son. You're going to hear from the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonwolu. He has something to say. He wants to respond to the latest update as regards um, Justice for Mobad. Um, justice for Mobad is what everyone is saying. Um, yeah, and that's what we are on to. But people are kind of worried. So, and I think that's the, that's the concern of that lady. They are kind of worried like, hold on a sec. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Next year, maybe something else will come up and um, they believe this will cover up. They could even come up with it or naturally allow it to flow. Something will cover up the justice for Mubad. And then um, slowly, no one will be held responsible. But um, the governor has something to say um, as regards that. And uh, I will want you to listen to what he has to say. Um, if you are interested in the justice for Mubad, which is not only about Mubad, it, 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 this this justice for Mobad is going to set an example. Um, it's going to set a precedent. Uh, it's going to kind of lay that example um, that uh, will, will, will be a future reference. That's what it is. This precedent will not uh, just uh, it will not be it will, it will be something to reckon with. It will be something for everyone to look at um, back to back. Whenever something like this comes up, people will be like, oh, remember back then when uh, this artist, R.I.P., um, people came out on the street. So please do not allow this to happen again because uh, we don't know how we are going to handle it. The more you pressure um, your, 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 your elected or selected uh, political office holder or agency, the more you pressure them, pressure the police, pressure every one of them, they will begin to realize that the power belongs to the people, not just an elected or selected uh, person. No, not at all. The power belongs to the people. And the only way you can do that is to press and press. And there's always one thing that I've always said. Educate yourself about reality. This will help you know what to press for and how to press for it. Let us proceed into this one. But before we proceed, like and share um, this video. Tap on the subscribe button. It's very important, very important. Tap on the subscribe button. And also, you can use a thanks button, the one with the dollar um, in the middle of it. Yes, you can use it to encourage this channel to do more. Um, let us get right into this one. Returning subscribers, I say thanks for returning. And those that have been here, I say thanks for being here. Mubad, um, we all are familiar with this case already. So my name is Nenna Iwuchukun. Um, I represent myself. We all are familiar with this case already. And, um, you know, there it, it was a, a very huge outcry at the time here in Nigeria and in diaspora. And people were almost calling for the heads of these people, you know, who we saw all over social media. It was going around that um, they were involved in this crime when Mubad died. So, um, Eventually, they were told, because we don't know anything, we only go by what we have been told. Eventually, they were brought back from wherever they were perching outside the country. And eventually, the investigation started. It lasted for maybe like one month, and we were told again that um, they were on bail. You know, they were not found guilty of anything. I would like to, if... I'm allowed to um, go back and rephrase the words of Mobad. If anything happens to me, hold social people responsible. I don't want to call names. I'm not afraid to call names, but I don't want to call them because it's, um, it's, it's like stating the obvious. We already know 
what happened. No, everybody here is familiar with the case. Now, it seemed like um, eventually, after a month, these same people hit social media, you know, flaunting themselves, holding their phones, you know, saying things like, oh, bo, bo, you know, I don't know what that means. I'm evil. But, you know, for me, what I understand is uh, in, that is a way of bragging, you know, and that really, really provokes my spirit, honestly. Um, my Excellency, I want to remind you about three years ago, um, I was on this same platform talking about how concerned I was about Sylvester Romani's case. And that really hit me hard. That incident really, really hit me hard. Because I remember after you left the building, I met you downstairs and you said to me, um, we are on this case. Don't worry, we're going to see to the end of it. And three years on, Sylvester Romani is supposed to be 15 years old, by the way, this month, because I've been following up on that case and nothing has been done. And to me, it's as good as dead. And because Sylvester Romani's case, had a slap on the wrist. That is why Mobat's own came to life. And I'm thinking, who's next? Okay, my governor, I'm sorry if I'm taking too much time, but I have to finish, I'm sorry. Um, please, my governor, you have the power to preside over the affairs of Lagos State and everything reports to you, everybody reports to you. Please, I ask you to please take this case as if Mobad were your son. Because if it were so, everything, any, everybody that had one contact or the other with this man would have been brought to book in one way or the other. I also want to mention that I know in functional countries, you know, where they have good laws that bind them. Security is not about emotion. It's serious business. I can remember I met you three years ago, like you said, there's no emotion. I'm standing in front of you, there's no emotion. It's not emotional. It's real. People get killed. People get maimed. We see it every day. I don't go to bed until 5 a.m. Three days ago, I was just complaining. When we had the, the crash of a vehicle, of a lorry, that crashed into the... Nobody needs to video me. Please. We're not joking here. I don't want to get emotional. We'll do the job. We'll do it well. These are police officers. The Bobat case is still life. They're treating it. We had to take the forensic out. The forensic that we built, that is the best in sub-Saharan Africa, was burned down during answers. We have to take the, the test out. They've done all their reports. Not until when it comes back that they can tie the two together. There are people that are in detention as we speak. They've not released them. Let's give little credit when it's necessary. Welcome back. It cannot be clearer than this one. One might be tempted to support Babajide Songulu. He's just a man. How much can he do? Um, jobs are given to, I mean, not really given to. And there are those that are professional or that are appointed to do such. And um, Babajide Sonwulu cannot be the police. Babajide Sonwulu cannot be the law. Babajide Sonwulu can only be the governor of the state. Yes, there are certain things that pass um, through um, his desk. Uh, and um, that he has to. Well, it's a good thing. Once the governor is focused on it, um, I think um, results will come. Um, there are certain, uh, you know, weaknesses of governors, uh, being that um, the governor does not control, is not in charge of the police. The police is controlled by the federal government. And being that Babajide Sawolu and the federal government, of course, they work hand in hand. So it should be easier. There shouldn't be... Uh, much uh, stress as regards finding justice for Mubad. Now, talking about justice for Mubad, we've looked at it, although there are some other sinister, you know, you know what I mean, some kind of um, eating there. But from what we can gather as at this moment, as at this time, Mubad's widow, fiancé or baby mama should be queried and questioned thoroughly. There are certain things that she knows, but then you know, she has a soft landing. And um, we can also say that uh, Nairamali and Samlari, somehow they have um, done some terrible things to him. And um, here we are, here we are. And they are out on bail. The woman talked about it saying that I saw them, they are 
like saying kokpo kokpo that investigation has to be done if there is any evidence that shows that they actually took Mubad's life then uh, it will be dealt with we cannot work on sentiment as the governor said that justice security is not about sentiment like who oh, they said koko popo koko koko popo means what it, it could mean anything to anyone did they do anything physically to mobad and it cost his rip it's a big question how did they do it where were they did they send someone who are those that were within 48 hours before his rip where did he go what did he do all of this points to those that we know it's prime boy spending wumi the widow darosha his uncle and maybe one or two couple of other people all that we have heard before the nigerian police decided to take in spending and prime boy is that wumi and mubad had argument and the argument is centered on nothing else than DNA and the Canadian visa. So the only thing people are not happy about is that uh, Wumi has not been dealt with. I mean, held and bill being requested. Probably because it's, uh, her mom is a police officer. That's why she's enjoying that. And people are not comfortable with this. So when you talk about justice, there are things that need to be, you know, no stone should be left unturned. And there should be no sacred cow. Babaji this Olu, he, he has said certain things that I kind of relate to, like the facility where we would have done this and gotten results rather than flying specimen abroad. And we have to wait for that thing, the, the specimen that has been flown abroad and the, the person that will interpret and do everything. We have to wait for all of these things. If they had not set ablaze that facility, which is going to cost us a lot of money, taxpayers' money, where is that money going to come from? If that had not happened, we would not be talking about flying anything abroad. We would have done it here and now. That's something else again. That's something else again. So in our, you know, in our, you know, that uh, push or that quick action of trying to protest, let us educate ourselves on what and what we should not go to and what we should go to. Setting places ablaze, setting facilities ablaze. You now see that place that Mobad would have gotten at least test done and many things done. It has been set ablaze by those who are ignorant who went ahead to set a government facility ablaze, thinking this will call the attention of the government. Now look at it action and inaction. That's it. Well, what do you think about this one? Drop your comment. See you in the next update. I say a very big thank you to those who have taken time to subscribe to this channel. And if you're yet to subscribe, kindly tap on that subscription button and also the red bell icon so you will be notified whenever videos such as this are uploaded.